Amen. To God be the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. I want to just kind of dissect this a little bit. We don't read Malachi much because there's not a lot of promise for cars and cigars and women in Malachi. But Malachi is a good book for man's day, for Father's Day. It's, it's a good book because the prophet Malachi, before he died, wrote this. Malachi was a great prophet. He was one of the minor prophets, but he was great in it. You see, in this text right here, Malachi rebuked the people and the priests for neglecting the worship of God. Let me say that again because you don't get that in churches no more. Let me say that again. Malachi rebuked the people and the priests for neglecting the worship of God and failing according to his will. I'm going to say that one more time because somebody's slow this morning. You, I hope you didn't leave your macaroni and cheese on at home or that your dressing won't be dried out because you put it in the stove. Malachi rebuked the people, and the priests were neglecting the worship of God and failing according to God's plan. Had nothing to do with Malachi. Malachi was standing in front of the people and rebuking them because of what they hadn't did according to God's will through his word and his way. That's a man. When he stand out front like that, now, now the Bible doesn't say that he had anyone with him. He stood alone and went out and told these men, you're not leading the people right now. He didn't, back during this time, during these days, you weren't really having men talking to women. When they came to the towns, most, the towns, most of the time it was the men who congregated up front. Now, you might have women around in the back. So he was talking to these men, telling these men, he was rebuking them, saying, you're not doing God's will. I know he was powerful because once he... Finish this, the word, the, the word of God went, the voice of God went silent for 400 years. Take heed to what the man or woman of God is saying. The priests, they were corrupt. So how could they lead people? They had become stumbling blocks instead of spiritual leaders. The men were divorcing their wives and marrying pagans. Women that doesn't manifest in the dignity of God. That's a pagan. The men relationship to God had become inconsequential. Everything that, that, that Malachi deals with, it talks, Mother Anne, to men. You haven't heard me say, now one thing about a female, female weren't, they weren't built to lead. They were created to follow, but the, 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 the train breaks down because the men don't lead. We don't have enough coal, or should I say word of God, in the engine to keep it moving. And when we lose our coal in the engine, the train stops moving. And now in, in modern day vernacular, the coal is the word of God. Ain't nothing like a train following the engine, you got one or two locomotives up front, and then you got all this long tail of train following them. And it's all predicated off of coal. The same thing that holds true with the word. You got all these people following you in your house, and when you run out of the word of God or coal, then they have to stop. It's the truth. It's the truth. Malachi was on to something when he started telling these people, I rebuke you because of the way you are leading, directing, or have just totally stopped. He says it right there in the text. He said the priests were corrupt. He said that they were like stumbling blocks instead of spiritual leaders. The men were divorcing their wives and marrying pagan women. How could they have godly children? When you're marrying something that's not godlike, it's the same thing happened today. Men get blindsided by the wooing of something that looks good in the natural. Maria, I wish I didn't have to say this, but but it's true. 
A lot of men never can appreciate the ingredients that's on the inside of a good woman. I'm, I'm going to give accolades in a minute to the, to the fathers, but I'm just saying men in general. We, 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 don't, we don't understand. We don't like the ingredients. We like to taste. And when we're just tasting, we don't even wait to see what the ingredients are because men aren't patient. We're not patient. It goes way back to Cain and Abel. Uh, Cain showed us that he's not patient when his brother sacrifice was blessed before him. He goes and kills his brother immediately. Well, same holds true right here. These men probably wouldn't get what they wanted at the house, so they go out, divorce the wives, and marry pagans. Now, the Bible back during this time, during Moses' law, said that the only way you can get divorced was if somebody cheated. It never says anything about the woman cheating, but these men go out and get these pagan women. Interesting how Malachi sees this thing, and right before the new covenant comes, he tries to straighten it out. And I guess that last sermon he gave must have been great because God said, I'm going to let the world marinate on this for 400 years. That had to be one heck of a sermon, bro, for, that, for, that, bro, for, for Malachi to teach this and God say, from that, that's the last you were here for 400 years. That must have been one heck of a sermon. The, the royalties off that sermon must have been great for Malachi. They, they must have been great. In, in, in our relationship with God, it is unimportant to take stock of yourself by setting aside your sinful habits. You have to put the Lord first. Give God your best daily. I've learned in my life that if I don't give God my best daily, something starts to go without. And when something starts to go without because I took my eyes off the prize of the mark of the higher calling, it shows in my behaviors. It shows in my behavior. It shows. I mean, my wife, what's wrong with you? I ain't nothing wrong with me, but there is something wrong with me. My eyes have been taken off the mark of the higher calling God. And it's evident in my behavior, but I can't see it because I'm stuck on self. Ain't nothing worse. It's one thing for a woman to be stuck on self, Sister Michelle, but when a man becomes conceited of himself, that's detrimental. That, that, because Jesus' strength was his humbleness. That was his strength. That was the Bible said. Jesus' strength, his grace came from humility. Men these days, they got to go on to the next woman. I want this pagan woman. That's best for me. In this text, Malachi gives us practical guidelines about commitment to God. Men must be willing to change our wrong ways of living. Let me say that right now. I, I'm going to get to the good part and pat y'all on the back later on. But we're going to put the ingredients in here first. He says it in the book of Malachi. Men must be willing to change our wrong ways of living. I've grown up and seen men where the wife can't say nothing. My great-grandmama couldn't. She wouldn't dare talk back to, to, to G.W. Favors. She wouldn't dare give an opinion on what he has already said. But that's not marriage. That's slavery. How can a culture who has been enslaved so long be one of the main cultures that exercise it? Come on now. We're, we're the main ones. Oh, well, I don't like slavery. Oh, nobody knows the trouble we've been through. And then you're causing your wife hell. Um, that's what he says right here. Now, he says, remember, if, if, if a household going to change, it has to start at the top. It can change in the middle, but the top don't change. And if the top don't change, the anointings don't flow. That, that's what he says. Now, then he comes back and say, make sure men should make their families a lifelong priority in life. I see how he, now watch this, now watch this coach, how he's so, why he's so educated in this. He is speaking prophet before Jesus even comes. He says, make your your family, your life long, whatever. Your family has to be your life, and you have to look at your family. This is forever. Why? Because if you go on over to the book of Matthew, then Jesus come back and say, love your wife as Christ loved the ch 
church unconditionally. Mother Ann, why we always forget the unconditionally part? I've had some struggles with my wife's unconditional. Yes. I, okay, I, I, go I see everybody hungry this morning, so I want let me hurry up and shut clothes on. Okay, I got the chisels. They with me this morning. But it's the truth. The Bible, listen. To be a father, to be a man, to be a husband, it's hard. It is extremely challenging because everything comes to you. But if it don't break you, it makes you stronger. You can't succumb to the ways and the snares of the enemy. That's when we show our wife and our children and grant your daddy fought back, baby. He fought back. He resisted that devil, and that devil eventually fleed. They were trying to get that car for three years. They was on the bus together. Somebody say together. See, that's the point, right? They was on that together. Daddy leading the way. Y'all come on. On the bus. You got the bus fag. Get on the bus. And then the daddy, the last one to get on. Then the wife get on, and she looking back. Where you want to sit it? Uh, over there. Sit over there. They on the bus, but they on the bus what? Together. You, you have to be willing to change. You can't be a head of household and be selfish. You can't be a head of household and be a loner. You have to be head of household and be in the thickets. You got to be in the trenches of that thing. If anything go on in my house, I better know. But I've learned right now that men don't want to know the bad. They just want to hear the good. I'm just telling you what made me a better man. I'm just telling you how I kept mine. It wasn't losing weight that kept my wife. It was me understanding and embracing responsibility that caused her to continue to fall in love with me. Somebody say over and over and over again. That's what caused the marriage. So Malachi wasn't talking to me with this right here. Not, not at this point in my life because I've learned. True. Men should be sensitive to God's refining process in their lives. God. Men should be sensitive to God's refining process in your life. What do it mean? That man has to be able to accept change. And however God moves and however God starts to tailor you, accept it. It ain't going to always be the way you plan it. But they say, if you want to make something, make God last, show them your plan. You know why? Because a plan would never supersede a vision. A, a plan would never supersede a vision. And he said, without a vision, my people shall perish. So if you're the head of house and you lose sight of God's vision, everything under you going to perish. Everything under you. Look at the king throughout the Bible that would go the way a prophet said for, for a season, and then once they get there, they turn the prophet loose. And shortly thereafter, things start to tumble down. You know why? Because we refuse to continue the process of God's refining us. What does that mean? He's shaping you, and he's molding you, and he's teaching you how to embrace hard things. He's teaching you how to don't give up, keep fighting. I got a black eye and one of my legs, my knee toe up now, but I'm still on the battle line. We don't have, we don't even sing songs like that no more. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord or, or put me at the front of the battle line. I'm on the battlefield. We don't sing those no more. Everything now has to be nice and mellow and godlike and Oh, I just feel like I'm in the clouds only for that song. And when the song's over, you realize you're in the depths of hell. I need some songs that I need to sing while I'm in the depths of hell as a man. Because sometimes, Coach, when you're, in, when you're in the depths of hell as a man, don't nobody understand what man's hell language but God. So we waste our time talking to everybody else but God. Because nobody else really has the answer. Because we understand that we all are given different assignments and we all have our own path to walk. The only thing that we have that's universal is God. This is what Malachi is trying to get these people to see. 
men should tithe out of their income, not of a measure. <laughs> men should tithe off of their income and not a measure of it. How many have been there besides me? Me and Coach and, 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 and Coach, okay, okay. We, we got some men already. I've been there where I used to $50 to church. Mama, your son used to $50 to church because I know where I was going after church. I was going to go gamble and, and make that other 50, try to make that 250 or $350 before I go to the crib. But it never works, Sister T. I'm telling you now, that's how I got saved. That's why I'm free. Because I have lived both sides of what Malachi argument is for and against. I understand what that means. Oh, I'm looking at, I'm letting my eyes dictate my future. When I look at my checkbook and I see I don't have enough for this, 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 and the first thing to go is God. I'm a glutton for punishment. I'm considering suicide. Because I'm putting him on the back. Why the one who bless us, who love us, who sustain us, why should he be last? Really? But you know why? We don't have the courage. Most men know the way, but refuse to walk the way. Because in walking the way, they don't know what's along the way. <laughs> well, 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 and then because we don't know what's out there, we don't feel equipped. And when a man don't feel equipped, that means he feels naked. And when a man feels naked, that means he feels vulnerable. And men don't like to feel vulnerable. <laughs> they don't like to be vulnerable. So they look out there and see it, and then they, I don't want none of that smoke. I don't want that at all. Let me stay over here. $50 on, baby. But your prayer is for greater. You might as well just cuss God out to his face. You might as well, you know, you buffoon, such and such, whatever, because that's what you're showing him. Can you imagine how he, he feels saying, you can't pay me my tithe, a tenth, but I gave you my son a whole. That ain't happened one. They, I, I wonder, I say, why God didn't have more kids? He could have, then I say, you know what? The power has to be distributed through the power of one. Because if he would have sacrificed Jesus and Jesus had a brother, they would have said, well, he can sacrifice him because he got another. But when you have nothing else, listen, when you have nothing else and you get that to God, that's when God said, woo, I got one. I got one. Because he gave all he had. But Malachi tells us in this form of rebuke that men was measuring what they give God. Men in your life you want to be successful. One of the first things you need to pull over and let out your car right now is pride. You got to let pride go. Pride cometh before the fall. We can't have pride. If you got to cry, cry. And if your wife see you cry, I promise you the reaction you're going to get is going to be unbelievable. Mother Ann, because you see your husband crying and ain't nobody died, but he and there going through and he been praying and it ain't came, came to pass, but he just tired and he crying. You know what Mother Ann going to do? I bet my life she's going to go right over there, get on them knees right next to him, and then she's going to start praying too. That's what women do. You know why? Because that's what they're designed to do. The problem is, is when we put, all, we move the woman from a helpmate to the be all. We do it, done. I've done it. I've done it. And, and you know what? My excuse was work. I'm working. I got to do this. I, I'm, I'm working. And she looking like me too. Until I found out something that when you look at the, um, they had this, this, this survey out and said the hardest job in the world is a stay-at-home mom. 
You saw it too, Donnie. They, they, say, they say the hardest job in the world is not being a, a, a doctor, it, it's not being a head coach, it's not being somebody working at the, a government. The hardest job in the world is a stay-at-home mom because it never stops and expectations have to be at 10 because it's the family that everything she does, it hinders or helps her family. That's a lot of pressure. If I jack up at work, well, they, can, they can write me up. But I'm going home. But if the wife mess up, ain't no peace at home. Uh, if she ain't now, everything in, in rambles at the house. I'm, I'm just saying, this is what now, this is what Malachi wrote. I'm the messenger. He, he said it right here. He said, Malachi stated that whoever ignores God will be strong to be burned. It says it right there in the text. I can't make this up now. I'm not going to do that. One thing I'm not going to do is lie up here on God. He says it right there. He said, he say, whoever ignores God's will will be straw to be burned. Men don't realize a lot of times the power we have. A, 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 a dad is a son's first hero and a daughter's first love. A, a, a man is a son's first hero. I don't care if your daddy was a mechanic. The, the boy, when he's young, he's going to go out there and start giving him the pliers, giving him screwdriver. If he's a plumber, the boy going to put on some gloves and be in there acting like he's plumbing. You know, if he plays sports, the boy going to get out there and be playing the sport because what he sees first is his father. The question is, what example is the father giving? You can't give one example and expect your kid to do something else. You, you can't do that. You cannot be, do this because I said so. And they were like, man, please, I'm through with you. The older they get, the more they see. The more they see, the more they, they learn and they comprehend. Yeah, yeah, you've been a waste. You're a waste. You, you, you taught me when I didn't know better, you know, but, but you, my, you, you're nothing wasted. Because I'm tired of you talking. What are you doing? Are you your children's hero, men? Are you your son's hero? And is you, are you your daughter's first love? I'm my daughter's first love. I know him. You know how I know I'm my daughter's first love, Maria? Because they always tell me. They used to always tell their daddy, Dad, I want to marry a man just like you. And I'm going to tell you the truth. It wasn't because, Mother Claudette, that I was giving them Mary Janes and Jelly Beans. Morgan, you come on outside, you're going you're gonna to cut this grass. Sarah, you stay in the house and help your mama clean up the house. And I get her started on the grass, then I go over there, I be edging while she cutting the grass. And we, it went, I wasn't that bad. We had, they were self-propelled. So I don't want y'all leaving here, Coach. They'll leave here and talk about me like a dog. Pastor ain't no good. Got a dog out there slaving. Then talking about I got my wife slaving. No, it was self-propelled. She hold it, and it'll drive itself. She just had to steer it. And I sit out there and watch it. And every time we would finish, we would sit down to show you how God allowed us to commune. We would sit on the side of the house, and we would have some of the most God-like, beautiful conversation. Sitting there, I said, you see how that, that, that looks good, doesn't it? Yes, sir. That looks good, Daddy. Yeah, that's what happened. When you work, things will look good. That's why they see me as their first love. They want a daddy. They want a husband like their father. So when they date a man who don't go to church, they have issue with it. They, they struggle with that because dad always was going to church. He gets us up. He get, makes your mama ain't late for church. So they, they see what's going on. We have to be what God wants us to be and not what we want to be. We, we, because anytime you go outside the lines of what God wants you to be and what God has designed for you to be, now you have become a rogue. You're stealing something that's not yours. And that's your spirit. That's your spirit. Now, now happy Father's Day to all the dads in here today. I, I had to get that in. The not yet dads, the stepdads, the moms who are dads, the adoptive dads, the granddads, and dads who are no longer with us. Y'all give them a hand. <laughs> Want to get all that out the way. 
Father's Day, we know, isn't nearly as big as Mother's Day. The floor shops aren't overshadowed. They aren't overworked at the floor shops. Card sale alert. They, they, they're, you know, ain't nobody really making a lot of profit off of Father's Day cards. Restaurants won't be half filled today, and church attendance pales in comparison. It's a shame, but it's the truth. It speaks for itself today. Church attendance on Father's Day pales in comparison. Coach, that's why I say men have to be strong-minded because the vast majority of the work we do is unappreciated. We got to be strong mentally between them ears because two-thirds of the stuff you do will go unnoticed. You finally fold up the clothes at the house and put them on the bed, and you leave the clothes there because you just want to hear your wife say, thank you for folding the clothes. You don't miss breakfast. Now lunch come by. Clothes still on the bed, folded nicely. Now they ain't as nice as hers, but they folded nicely. And she just walking right by them, just doing what she got to do and keep going. And you wait and there's dinner time, and you say, you know what? The heck with it, I'm going on to eat. It's tough, Father's Day, in a lot of ways. It's tough because men are always beat on. They've always browbeat, but we have to keep the, it's, it's like a Rockweiler or a pit bull, them dogs right there. You have to continue to walk them all the time. You have to make sure they understand who the master is. If not, they're going to get out of line. But you bought the dog because you know they were ferocious. But what you didn't know is that I got to continue to spend time with this dog so that this dog will understand who the master is of him who feeds him and water him. The same thing holds true for men. We have to, God has to make sure he knows we're ferocious, we're big, we're strong, we're bad. We're the image and likeness of God. We should be. But he knows I got to keep them right here and I got to keep walking him and yanking on him every time he get out of line so he'll understand, I provide for you. I'm your way maker. Uh, not that over there. That job you got, that could be gone tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Trying to go over here and have a good time and be like everybody else, I snatch it all off from under you. Then to show you how God bipolar, you'll think he's bipolar because he'll snatch it from you, let everybody else leave you, then he'll be right there with you. <laughs> you'll be like, well, what that, the song that, 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 that you sing, What a Mighty God We Serve, you got to be 45 and older to remember that song. That, that song, has, I've played that a lot of times in my life because I have cussed God. At times in my life when things got really hard, Sister Michelle, I did. And then God come back two weeks later and make a way for it. And then I feel bad and be like, God, I'm sorry. Lord, forgive me, God. I don't even appreciate what he did, and I'm just trying to make it right with him. Pastors all across America praise moms for their sacrifices. Everybody weeps for mothers. You lay there and watch your wife get all kind of texts for Mother's Day. And then if you got three, you good. A man got to be strong, Sister Danielle. Y'all don't realize a lot of times what a man has to endure. He sits there and kids come and say, Happy Father's Day. Call the mom, go down there, go in there and say, Happy Father's Day to your daddy. The daddy heard it in another room. Then they call, happy Father's Day, daddy. And they give you the little, uh, the little Indian hug, and then they back on and out of watching TV. Then for Mama's Day, everybody's up, breath smelling good, everybody cleaned up. Mama, we got this for you. It, it's tough being the head. I get on the heads, but it's tough being a father. On Father's Day, what we talk about all the time, absentee fathers. Deadbeat dads. Statistics are recited. Well, they own the guilt for not being there for the kids. Mothers use that day as another day to put a, a, a man in court. Father's Day is a day of court for a lot of men. And mama, yeah, call your daddy for Father's Day. And 
call him, and then she makes sure she hear him when, 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 when they get him on the phone. Hey, daddy. Yeah, that's your dad on the phone. Ask him why he ain't paid child support in such and such. Ask him why he's such and such, such and such. Like, mama, you, you told us to call him. Mama used and abused the kids so she can get her point across. Father's Day means a lot of things for a lot of different people. But I want to tell the Father's Day we honor you. And we thank God for all you do. It's not easy being a dad, but I will say this, it's worth it. It's not easy, but it's worth it when you see those children start to sprout up and you see your wife grow. It's worth it. When you, when you see that, I can't stand, you, let me tell y'all something. I, I, I can't stand people who all, when the anniversary come around, everything's plum. Yeah, everything plums and, and daffodils. You know, and I'm like, y'all must not be really no threat to the devil. Because I've been married for 30 years, 30, 31 years. Thank you, baby. 31 years. Thank 31 years now. And every year we have some, some times in during that year that's kind of troubling. What I, yeah, they, they're kind of troubling now, but I, I've learned over the years how, how, how to roll with it. We've learned over the years on how to roll together. We learned that it's easier to fight together than apart. So, so the trials have come to truly make us strong. So now she can look up and truly say, I love you. You're a great husband. And my children couldn't have had a better father. Those are things that are priceless. The other day we was in there and my wife had left out the house. I was downstairs eating breakfast. And she comes back in the house like two minutes later. And I'm looking like, what's going on? And she come in the house, and then she just come back in. And over that, uh, kiss me, then she just walked back out the door. That's what I said, Donnie. I said, all right. I got dizzy. I'm like, what are you doing? What happened? She said, I just wanted to kiss you. I miss you. Just I'm so glad that you're my husband. Uh, now, I'm going to show you how I've matured, Mother Ann. I want to tell y'all the truth. Now, back in the day, my next question would have been, that devil would have been on my shoulder. The next question is, what you want? <laughs> John, my, that my next question would have been, what she want? She up to something. But now it's not like that anymore. It's like it's genuine. We, we're genuine. I'm, I'm convinced you have to go through hell before you can get to heaven. You, you got to, I'm convinced, man. You, you're going to go through hell, coast before you get to even get, to, get close to heaven. I mean, think about it. Now, when you plant a tree or something in the ground, that roots start growing more during the winter months than they do the summer months. Oh, y'all. <laughs> They, they grow more during the winter months when it's hard and cold and ain't nobody out there. Look at this pretty tree, the plum tree. What? Now the roots are growing then because God say, in your time of growth, I need you to be isolated from everybody else so that you can grow the way I want you to grow and nobody else can get the credit. So when it's tough, keep growing. Don't stop growing and, and start praying for sunshine and warm days because then your air conditioner go out. No, I just want to grow. And when I want to grow, I understand that a lot of times the weather will be inclement. It would be bad weather. But the badder the weather, the more I grow. The worse the weather, the more I won't have to worry about people around me because people don't come around when it's bad. They, they don't come around you when things, when all hell breaking loose in your life, I don't care how many of your friends your wife got, let hell start breaking loose. And watch how many she talked to then. You'd be like, she's sure talking to the boys a lot more around here. Every time I turn around, she in there talking to the boy. Because the friend girls have run and gone. Now, they'll say some things like, I pray for you. But then you say in the day, like, baby, I need bread today. <laughs> I need something today. Most people... When they see that time, when that winter coming in your life, most people will vacate the premises because they refuse to get cold with you. 
They don't want to get cold with you. I'm talking about church folk. I ain't talking about the people on your job. You don't expect that for them, but I'm talking about the people you get up and high-five all the time. Y'all on the phone and speaking back and forth in tongues and all this and that. And then the main one, they go from speaking in tongues to testifying against you. We call that, uh, you know, lying. Because people don't want to be in the cold with you. People don't like cold. Especially when it's a bear cold. They, they don't like that you're alone. And God said, I got you right where I want you. I got you right where I want you. A plethora of things come out of this. I got you right where I want you. Now you can see who your true friends are. I got you where I want you. I ain't never left you or forsake you. I'm still here. I got you where I want you. It's cold, but you can endure it. Now you're starting to have some self-assurance in yourself. I got you where I want you. I am not watering you every day, and every day ain't sunny, but you're still living. I got you right where I want you, baby. Everything around you seems docilent, but you still got life. Everybody else has quit. You finding a way to keep moving. Everybody else stop. You keep on dragging. You keep on trying to go. And God say, see, you see what you can do by yourself. You see what you can do when you trust in me. You don't need as many people in your life as you think. You don't need that many. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, when God puts you by yourself, God is trying to allow you to see that you are a talent developer. You're a talent that's being developed. He had to put you in a, in, a, in a place by yourself because when you get in a place where you can't do nothing else, that's when that's, that, that extra thing, that, that sixth sense come out of you, that extra gear come out of you, you didn't know you had. When you got that phone call and they say you had this diagnosis, it was only then and then that you know what you had. It was that time when they say, the IRS say, we don't gonna shoot your check. And you say, I was barely making it, but you kept on going. Now you start wondering, oh, this was in me. I never knew what was in me. And God said, I've been telling you that greater is in me than he that is in the world. But I refuse, I refuse to live and listen to what's in me I listen to everybody else and you don't realize the other people that, are, that you're listening to are being used by the devil because most people and I hate to say this but it's a rarity aunt, that most people don't want to see you do good they'll do whatever they can to hurt you Men have a lot to, to deal with. You should pray without ceasing for your family every day, women. You should pray for your husband every day because they need it. There's so much out here. And then to be a black man in a place like this, we need, I don't need a 36, 24, 36. I need a John 316 woman. <laughs> I need a woman that know how to get a prayer through. I need a woman that has proven to me that come hell or high water, we going to shout together. I, I need a woman who going to cook when ain't nothing there but lima beans, pinto beans, and light bread. She going to cook and make the best out of it, and she going to feed me like a king. I ain't need not a paper plate. I'm leading, I mean, out of a real plate. If it ain't nothing but beanie weenies, she bring them to the table and put them in. Baby, dinner's ready. I've been there. Done, I've been there. And I walk proudly every day. I make sure as a man, as the head of household, that I tell my wife, thank you for everything she prepared. My mom and my sister, my children will tell you that. I don't care if it's a peanut butter jelly. So, baby, thank you. Thank you for that. And she always say the same thing. Anything for my king. Now, it took me a while to get her to that. But my sacrifice can help you get your glory quicker. Oh, it was rough. It was rough. I, I, I mean, I, we had plenty of days we ate nothing but egg sandwiches. And doing that egg sandwich, I still told her as the head of the household, baby, thank you for this egg sandwich. Any ketchup? It's the truth. Job description of a father is bad. I'm going to read through this quick and then we're going to have to go. He's the protector. He protects 
the household mentally, physically, and spiritually. He protects the household from intruders. But here's what we tell Mayor Dixon. We always talk about intruders as in burglars. A real father gauges the household from intruders spiritually. He can recognize when a spirit in the house that shouldn't be. Or somebody over there, he, oh, no, they, they can't stay here. Baby, go ahead and let them get on out of here. And when they get out of here, open up every window in here and get something and put it around, and then we're going to pray that spirit out here. That's what a real man does. He's the protector. Somebody say protector. Yeah, number two, he's a provider. Now, now this can be one of the most challenging things, especially with the way inflation and all is going today. Because he has to strike a balance. Watch this, man. Between providing and being present. Oh, my, 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 my. It's hard. A man trying to make the money, but the money he has to make requires more time. So he don't have a nine to five where he's home by six every day. He might be working from seven in the morning to 10 at night to get that money. And it's hard for a man to balance that. It's hard for, that's the hardest part about finances. There's a man getting to the point to where he can differentiate between providing and being present. Tough for a man. We got a lot, Anthony. We have, you're working overtime on weekends just trying to get the money. And we, baby, we're doing okay. Baby, I'm trying to get a nest egg now because I've learned we don't know what tomorrow brings. Yeah, you got to have a strong wife at home when you're on the road. Donnie's on the road a lot, but he's trying to make it. He's sending mom, some wife getting the, the, the check, the, the money go direct deposit. He don't even see the money. He like me. I ain't seen a check of mine in 15 years. Sometime I, I did I get paid this week? She, my wife come back just like a wife would. Yes, baby, we got paid this week. We, we got paid this week, but it's the truth. A trainer. I mean, a husband is a teacher. A man is a teacher. They're always teaching opportunities with your wife. There's always teaching opportunities with your kids. If you're with them enough, you'll see it. Sometimes you let them run through it, and then after a while, you'll eventually say, okay, now it's time to teach them. That's another thing. The next thing, trainer. You're the first trainer for your children in your house. If the kid respect the the coach, more than they respect the dad at home, something's wrong. Something wrong now. I'm not saying the coach ain't a good coach. The coach is doing what he's supposed to do. He's getting paid to coach. But when the kid love the coach and respect the coach more than the dad at home, the dad at home ain't doing something right. He don't have the right gloves on. Because he should be out there with the coach. If he ain't on the field, at least sitting in the stands or watching him practice every now and then, boy, you did good today. Or, boy, you got to get better. I, I heard coach getting on you. you. You need to get better. You cannot let other people raise your children so you can get the credit. You should be the priest in your household. You should be the one that's the spiritual leader in your home. You should set the examples. You should bring the word. You should pray over your kids and lead family devotion, men. The man should lead family devotion. It shouldn't always have to be the wife remind the man of prayer, uh, saying, the, saying the prayers at night, uh, saying, my family know already, we, we trained our daughters up when they were young. We're going to eat together. We eat pretty much dinner together all the time and breakfast when we could, but they know, and nobody eating the dad to sit down at that table. And when dad sit down at the table, if everybody ain't at the table yet, yeah, I'll wait. I'll wait till everybody gets to the table. Then we all, you know, we're going to say grace. You're establishing the order that God has commanded. When everybody's not there and you're going on with this, you have holes in your relationships, in your marriage, in your family, just like a teeth. You have a teeth, but it's decaying. You have a teeth and it's decaying. Yeah, it's still there, but it's decaying. And the only way to deal with the decaying teeth is you got to go in there first and pull out all the decay. And sometimes that hurts. But you can get a shot that can minimize the pain called the Word of God. And the more you read the Word of God, you can look at it and say, well, hey, okay, this ain't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Then you can be a playmate. Make sure you play with your kids. Make sure you spend time with them. Go walking with them sometime. Do something constructive. Oh, don't just sit down and watch a movie with them and let the movie be the entertainment. You be the entertainment sometime. Play tic-tac-toe with them or 
uh, SOS or something, uh, connect four, do something with them that you're good at so you can beat them so they can learn what it means to continue to try. They stale in here today, but I'm going to preach it anyway. It, it's good. The man, you got to find something that you're good at that you can beat your kids in so that they'll learn how to overcome failure. Talk rough to them when you beat them. I do it all the time to Sarah. We play 21. I mean, uh, Uno, I'm always constantly being Sarah, but Sarah, she took it the wrong way, and Sarah learned how to start. She, instead of learning to just beat me fair and square, she started cheating. Coach, she cheated on me. And then she will swear me and her mom and sister down that she's not cheating. Sarah, you're cheating. She'll just come up with all kinds. It's my turn. No, it ain't. it's my turn, Sarah. That is my turn. She gets totally over engulfed. I didn't do the best job with her when it came to that piece there, when, when it came to being the playmate. I think she probably watched her dad, and then she took that after me. Now, Morgan's going to, she'll try, but Morgan spirit won't let her cheat long. Sarah got by any means necessary spirit. She, she'll, she'll ride that thing to the grave. I, I, my baby, y'all, don't, don't look, don't, don't, don't take it for granted now because she's petite. Last two things, you got to be a servant. Jesus said, greatest amongst you shall be the greater what? Servant. He who is the greater man must be the greater servant, which means that we're not going to get all the accolades. Jesus put it like this. That's why we don't get what we get, because Jesus put it here. Man, I'm, I'm good now because I read this. He said, who is the greater vessel must first be the greater servant, which means that we're going to do a lot of things, man, that we won't get credit for. So stop looking for the credit. You got to have something inside of you and say, God, I did it. Lord, I did it. If I did it and they, and they good and everybody's moving forward, then God, that's more than enough appreciation for me. It says right here in the text, I can't make this up. Men, at the, at, the, at the head, that means you're the greatest servant. You're a better servant than your wife. You're a greater servant than your kids. I know you command all them and you are the head of household, but you're the head of household to show them how it's done. Be the servant that God wants you. Listen, Jesus came with all power in his hands, but he was a servant. He was still a servant. What the Bible say? The Bible, the Bible say when they got in the upper room, when, 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 they, when they went to the Last Supper, what did Jesus do? He went and prepared them by what he do. He did the one thing that's dis, dis, disheartening. He washed all their feet. He washed all the disciples. You, what, what, back during the time of washing feet, that was degrading to have the lamb wash the feet of the disciples. That means a dad shouldn't have a problem changing the pamper. A dad shouldn't have a problem sacrificing a little lunch money so that his kids can continue to thrive. Daddy can't get that suit right now or them tennis shoes because the kids need it. God, you're the greatest servant. You shouldn't have no problem doing whatever it takes for your wife and your, your children to have what they need because Jesus did it for us. Who's a greater servant? The journey of a man is hard, man. It's hard. Last one is you got to be the weatherman. Somebody say weatherman. You got to be the weatherman. You're responsible as the head of house for keeping the climate and the atmosphere conducive. Not your wife, not your smartest kid, not your oldest kid, no. None of that. It's the man's responsibility. If the climate go wrong in your house or the atmosphere go wrong in your house, it's the man's fault. Because God gave man dominion over everything. Bills not being paid, your wife spending too much money, it's your fault. I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. That's okay. That's okay, Sister Chen, because most women in here will be spending too much money. That's okay. I'm just trying to teach and, and, and give accolades all at the same time. This is bipolar, but I'm doing it. It's tough, but it's doing it because I got you over here then back over there. But everything that takes place in the house ultimately falls on the responsibility of the head. Who's the head? The husband. Why? Man, I'm already a servant, man. Now you got me being a provider, a teacher, and a trainer. Then you come back and say, now I got to be the weatherman. Yes! Because too much is given, much is required. He made us in his image and after his likeness. Not woman. 
He made woman from man. He made man from dust. He blew breath into the nostrils of man. Then man became a living soul. When he blew breath into us, he blew himself into us. When he blew himself into us, what he was saying is now all things are possible through me. That's why da the devil's so confused. The ever since the devil saw that day, the devil been jacked up ever since mother Anne. He's been trying to figure out what he blew in them. He had something to go with whatever he blew in them. I want to know exactly what he blew in them. And Satan say, did God say me? And when God told him me, he knew he had lost. Because no matter what Satan blow in you, it'll never be God. We, we, Donna, we call it blowing smoke. We, we blowing smoke up. You know what y'all be saying out there. Girl, they blowing smoke up. You know what y'all say out there in the street. And they really are. The devil is blowing smoke up you, tricking you into thinking he's God. And then you get devil consequences. And it slows you up on your journey but it's not impossible. Father's presence is tough. It's tough because the most important thing a father has to do in life is be present. As I really started looking at this, Mother Claudette, and thinking about everything, I say the, 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 the greatest thing a man is tasked to do Guys, we got to be present through the good and the bad. Through the happy times and the sad, we cannot abort. We have to remain on the ship. The last one to abort the ship is the captain. And in the house, the man is the head of household and he is the captain. And with that, that makes a man, a father's presence, instrumental. It makes a father's presence mighty. It makes a father's pre presence bold. When a father walk in the house, man walk in the house, everybody should be at ease. Everybody should take a deep breath and woo dad is home. Everybody should look and say, everything's all right now. Dad is home. But you can't buy that one. You have to earn that one. And most times you earn it, Mother Ann, they earn it in tough situations. Remember when my daughters got old enough to realize what was going on? Right when we were starting the church, it was right before we lost the house, some of were coming to pick up my truck. We had played hide and go seek with them for a long time. I'm go see for a long time. They finally called us. Should have let them got that truck when it was at night when they were knocking on the door at two in the morning. I waited. And they called us. We lived in a cul-de-sac. There was a lot of people, you know, come out and play my van on Fridays at the cul-de-sac. Looked outside and everybody stopped and you look, see that truck on backed up. Too late now. I have been hiding it in the garage. Left it out. And as they was towing that truck and starting to put it up on the, the flatbed, called my wife. I called my two daughters. I said, y'all come here. Because everybody outside looking. I said, y'all see this? You know, my daughters, what are they doing, Daddy? They taking the truck. What's wrong with the truck? I didn't pay the note. This will never happen again. The boy can, that's what I told him. I said, this will never happen again. 
But Coach Harold, as I said it, tears was running down my eyes, running down my face. And I walked away and went in our room, shut both doors and cried. It was one of the most hurtful, embarrassing days of my life to my wife and children. But I said, we're going to see it. We're going to see it together. Because I knew if they can see me when I was down, they can embrace when I got up. They can appreciate it. It was hard. It was hard, Maria. It was hard. It was hard on your brother. But one thing my granddaddy Grover G.W. Favors taught me, he always used to sit there and tell me, you got to be a man when a man is needed. He always told me that. He didn't say a lot, but he, Tony, when you get older, you got to be a man when a man is needed. That day a man was needed. And there's going to be a lot more time for you men in here, where there are going to be days where a man is needed. My prayer today is that you guys be strong and encouraged. Be of good cheer. That whatever you're going through is not too hard for God. That he's already overcome this world. Believe God. Trust God. See the salvation of God. But you'll never know God until you really trust him. And people can't trust God for you. Sister Tiva, we have to do that on our own. And it's challenging. I wish every man in here a happy Father's Day. For those above you, those under you. I thank God that you are blessed to be here this morning as we stand. You've just had an experience with champions, and we are so glad that you tuned in today. Let's continue to honor God through our commitment to give. There are four ways to give. You can give online via Cash App at dollar sign Champions for Christ. Next, you can give online at www.championsforchristim.org. Lastly, you can give during service or on our mobile app available in the Apple and Google Play stores. Please be sure to tune in each and every week to our online broadcast. Encourage others to tune in with you. Remember, we are champions because we are champions for Christ.